Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Fatma Mathurishi and I'm a fourth year MBBS student. We are back with another Embrace series and today we have wonderful Dr. Nafisa Fatma, another accomplished doctor from Pioneer Batch. Assalamu alaikum Dr. Nafisa. Alaikum Assalam. How are you? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so for all of our um, viewers, uh, recently Dr. Faraz uploaded a video in which he was so happily announcing that his, his daughter actually became first certified female general surgeon from Shehzad College. So yeah, uh, can you tell us about that? Congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, it was an overwhelming experience. Um, I had my exam on 12th and 13th. So the thing is that the, the result is announced the same day, the second day of the exam. So everyone at my home was on alert. When I came back to the exam, because uh, usually it comes, it, it is announced at around 4 p.m. in the evening, but ours was a little delayed, so I got to know at 6:13. So I got an email saying that it is my pleasure to inform you that you have uh, been declared successful. So I was uh, all tears and overwhelmed. Because I didn't have a good exam, so I was worried that what will happen. And Alhamdulillah, th I thank Allah a million times for that, that he made this easy Mashallah. for me. Really, Mashallah. You're definitely such an inspiration for all of the female MBBS students right now and all of those who are aspiring to be a general right. surgery. Right. I'll just give a brief introduction about the Embrace series that it's just a, essentially a platform in which our seniors are going to provide us guidance and all those seniors to, to look as a source of inspiration. So it's basically the juniors of SKZ embracing our accomplished seniors and looking for guidance there. So I think... I am um, honored. <laughs> so you being the source of inspiration, I would really love to know your entire life story, how it all started. So let's start with your life before SKZ. How was it like? Life at home was uh, a little strict because my mom is a little B9 one, but my dad was a very staunch disciplinarian. And, uh, you know, if our homework is due in two days, we would be the one who would be submitting our homework on the first day. So that is how it was. Um, so well, he was a general surgeon too. I can so relate to him now because uh, he's a little authoritative. Hai. So, aur, uh, apni baat ki adat bhi hoti hai. so there were some certain very specific principles that uh, I and my siblings are raised with. You know, that we have, we can't be out of home after Maghreb. We cannot be out of home without <laughs> informing our mom and dad. You know, we were, um, we were allowed to attend school functions. Provided they are in school and school only. So, um, rest was fine. But we used to enjoy it too. My dad was uh, very, um, loved to take us out. We were both uh, inside the city and outside too. So, it was good overall. So, um, I used to write and read. And uh, I was um, not very much social. I studied my um, initial years in Crescent. So, from class 1 to O-levels. And I was the eldest in my family. Like I was the first kid of my parents. So I had a lot of Particularly my dad. Class 1 to O levels, I was a very good student. And all into padhai. I used to participate in sports and debates too. Almost um, every year. We used to have those debating competitions every year. Um, you would be familiar with that. So to everyone, I'm actually also a Crescentarian. So to see another Crescentarian in SKZ and Mashallah is so accomplished, just makes me so proud. So yeah, fun you. Oh, I, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I, you, once you're from a same institute, you connect at a different level altogether. So, you know, so not only Sheikh Zayed, we share Crescent too. So, um, and then Crescent was, uh, has given me the confidence and I think it has played an integral part in who I am today. So um, those were uh, amazing years, but uh, in O-levels I had, there was some difficulty because my dad was diagnosed with a renal cell carcinoma when I was doing my O-levels by the end of my O-levels almost. 
so during uh, his illness while he was fighting with his illness i appeared in the exams that was a, a slightly tough time but alhamdulillah i got through o levels easily and then i went to lgs to do my a levels 55 main um a levels mein maine bahut maza kiye kuch kam pada aur bahut aaram se ho gaya o levels mein because it was the two years program crescent ka compared to the other schools which have three years pro- program there was this pressure on me that we need to you know put push our, ourselves a little harder because we have a little lesser time compared to the rest of the uh, people the students we are competing with but a levels was a little easy we had three subjects despite my parents telling me not to go not to opt for a levels I went against their wishes and <laughs> opted for A-levels instead of FSC because they were like, you know, it's it's just a general opinion that A-level students have, you know, it gets difficult for them to get into a med school in Pakistan because of the the admission process that we have and it is not really A-level students friendly. So, um, and exactly this is what that happened to with me. as predicted i appeared in the mcat mera i got straight as in o and a levels but unfortunately at that time the equivalence was 935 which is um, no you know you cannot compete with others on with such a score so um, despite that um, i went on with took an mcat us waqt um, decide hua tha that and uh, there will be a different mcat for a level students and different mcat for uh, fsc students i thought i thought okay that means we can do it but ulta ho gaya usse bilkul it was not really a level space just me there was a lot of things which were actually fsc based too so i did not really score good marks in mcat yeah so then they announced this sort of top 2700 list i was i think on the merit number 2100 something and there were only 2000 something seats then um, my mom and i and my chachu uh we decided that okay fine i am uh, i had not applied anywhere else i was so stupid <laughs> mai i went on uh, and then we decided that okay lumps ke fall semester mein mai jaungi and we will go for and i was i applied in lumps and i was uh, us waqt i think lumps college admission test ho raha tha lcat it has been switched to sat now probably uh, then i started preparing for that and all of a sudden um an, another friend of mine who was also with me in Sheikh Zayed. Um, she just, she was with me in O levels in present, Amna. She's a bureaucrat now. So uh, she actually uh, just dropped the admission forms at my place and told my mom that these are the, so the Sheikh Zayed admission forms and just fill them and send them. But because I was so much in depression that I have to switch fields, I won't be a doctor maybe anymore. Then it happened. It was meant to be. So what about your SKZ life? Like what are the highlights, memories, extracurriculars, friends and lessons that you learned? um skz ko to humne apni jagir samjha hua tha because we were the we were not the pioneer batch and we were the only batch when we were first years. So um we were extremely pampered by our teachers. Uh they took great care of us and we were taught very well. when i used to talk to a couple of my friends who were in king edward who were in alama ikbal and you know those were considered excellent medical colleges you know a dream of a medical student so and when i used to compare um, how they are taught and how we are taught i used to feel really privileged uh, because our teachers took great care of us we were taught with a absolute uh, mehnat i think hard work nahi mehnat is the right word to say so um shikh said has made me who i am i was uh, a little padhaku type too focused um at times i look back and i think that oh i could have enjoyed a lot and i have missed a lot of chances um but, uh, but the my friend circles i had marine was my very good friend sara was my very good friend um sara tahir and sara beg so we had i am two Sarah's were my very good friends. So, and uh, both of the, all three of them, they were very studious and equally competitive. So, you know, I was just surrounded by people who are competitive and who are perhaps good type. 
and uh, but we had an, an, we enjoyed life too at skz i think um, about the co curricular i did not really participate in too many things but two quiz competitions the first quiz competition i and sara organized and it was a very good experience uh, professor sohail helped us a lot tab pehle pehle unse dar bahut lagta tha because unka bahut terror hota tha when i was in first and second year but when we went to third year jab pata lag gaya ki ab sir ne exam nahi lena to sir ka terror bhi kam ho gaya but sir helped us a lot his office was available 24/7 round the clock when while we were preparing for the quiz competition and uh, it went really well it was a very good experience so um, just entering in the shehzad corridor and looking at the distinctions board there is your name written nafisa fatma on two or three boards so what were your major academic achievements can you list them for inspiration um i scored uh, first in the first year like in the university and after that i never stood first i was second after that through all those four years uske baad kaver for always was always first in the succeeding four years and i was always second That's a big achievement. I mean, second position is even a big achievement. <laughs> distinction wise. Yeah, uh, about the distinctions, I had a distinction in anatomy, in biochemistry, uh, in both first and second year. Biochemistry, I was not studying. I was very low. I was studying, but it was, I don't know, it was a little easy. First year, I mean, biochemistry was, I don't, I felt, I felt. really easy because a levels mein jo hum organic chemistry padhte hain it is too de- detailed and it is somehow similar to what we used to study in first year second year i had a distinction in second year uh, biochemistry uh, and then in third year in forensic medicine and then pediatric um, and pharmacology throughout your skz what were your interests like what did you think what kind of specialty would you like throughout your student life um i wanted to be a doctor to be a surgeon so that explains it um in the first year i was very interested in dissection and um i used to you know stay in dissection halls for if you know we are off at 2 i would be there at 3 at times at 4 maybe and one of our demonstrators dr dr sobia she isn't there she's at the, she's now working as a in um, in as a senior faculty in king edward in anatomy she was very dedicated and she used to stay with me in the halls for those longer hours um i op- chose uh, services deliberately on uh, as a first choice because we were inductors in a central induction system but um, i when i applied i never knew that i would be i would have the highest merit all over punjab in general surgery but when the list was published i got to know that oh i had i am on the highest merit wow that's cool that means i can choose any department i want to go to so then i you know i started asking my seniors which is a better place do i want i really really wanted to stay in sheikh zaid because um, you know sheikh zaid was just like a home to me so or a boy comfort zone ban jati and you just do not you know it gets a little difficult to stay you know just get out of your comfort zone one of my uh, seniors who was a fourth year resident when i was doing my house job in sheikh zaid yeah he advised me that you know you should go to professor mahmudaya in mm-hmm. surgery in services everyone not not only him everyone told me that if not professor mahmudaya then go to professor mohit which was who was our professor in sheikh zaid so the only reason of going out of sheikh zaid for surgery was because sheikh zaid being not falling in the government pure government category has a little lesser influx of patients compared to the other government hospitals because uh, plus the first uh, because we have a slightly different uh, way of running emergencies in uh, sheikh zaid and i used to wonder that my surgeon ban jungi aur maine trauma nahi manage kiya hoga which is like the heart of general surgery so that is the only reason i decided to go to services and work under professor mahmud ayaz i think which was a very good decision to make he is also a director of national residency program of pakistan and vice president of college of physicians and surgeons he was an excellent human being mashallah um a workaholic who 
worked tirelessly when i went to shake uh, services it was an entirely um, a different environment tha aur foreign se adjust nahi hui thi mai it was a little difficult for me to get adjusted to an altogether a different environment plus uh, people did not know me the all the pamper and the you know all the shabash that i used to get and i was so used to and i was spoiled by my teachers in shake zai wo ekdam se wahan pe to nahi milta so but i adjusted well i was at that time i was um, there was one senior female resident to me um, who was in her third year who got married and went to the states and then i was the only female resident left in the department uh, there was one senior who was a female who was also an sr uh, who was also very competent dr huma so she was the only re- female there working and i was the only female resident for a couple of months you know the our residency is planned like this as one those who are training who are being trained in general surgery they stay in general surgery for like 12 to 14 months and then for 9 months they go into multiple uh, sub specialties for rotations and for better exposure so during my rotations i i always wanted to go to states and it was just because of you know i wanted to do surgery and because my because uh, my mom wanted me to join as a gc here so i just joined and she was like ke tumhara beta tumhara step my steps ki ho jayenge lekin training join kar lo and i think she was right i uh, started my preparation for step 1 while I, in uh, while i was doing my rotations in 2018 and then appeared in step 1 in 2019 february during my first year of training I went to the states for to present a research paper in a conference, and uh, for that I was funded by CPSP thanks to my professor, Professor Mahmood Ayaz. So, and it was a very good experience, you know, meeting people and seeing them work in a slight, you know, seeing a developed world coming from a developing country. Um, then I uh, at that time I decided that जो भी हो गया steps तो मैंने करने ही हैं. so step 1 i am done with uh, step 2 i could not uh, complete it in my general surgery training because once the rotations are over you are back in general surgery and while i was in third year um, i was a batch in charge of my batch so i who runs an emergency so it gets a little difficult because uh, the emergency in services hospital is hectic and you have to work around the clock and then you know you just Have to fight के बस sleeping hours ढूंढ रहे होते हो आप. Let's talk about the surgery lifestyle in Pakistan. How did you find it? Um, surgery lifestyle is hectic as one can imagine. You know the even if once you're a consultant, you have to do emergencies. You have to be available around the clock. So you know you have to be one dedicated person and someone who is really interested in surgery. I think only those who those can pursue it. surgery residency is characterized by long working hours so that is like a hallmark so plus not only long working hours but uh, because um, surgeons are involved in a lot of there, there is a lot of decision making process on, and your decision your smallest decision can uh, make it or break it so there is not only physical exertion there is a lot of mental exertion so i totally disagree with people who say that surgeon ko bilkul padhna nahi padta the only thing that i think that distinguishes a good from a very good surgeon is uh, the one who's a very good surgeon is uh, a very good physician as well so what about the family life how does that balance out in the surgery lifestyle i think family has to understand <laughs> that this person is becoming a surgeon and you know they have to give uh, that person some space a uh, few first two years of training are difficult uh, as soon as uh, you become a third and a fourth year resident it becomes slightly less difficult uh, but then again it's it's really busy because one of you have um, one sunday as an emergency sunday which is 24 hours and um, 24 hours after emergency you have a main theater list in almost all the hospitals it could works like this i don't know why but that is how it is that uh, following the emergency you have the long theater list which goes till 3 at the next day what about the reward versus the hard work ratio in the uh, for surgery in pakistan 
uh, how is the yeah. income? How is that uh, a motivation for someone choosing a surgery? Wow, that's a very good question. But uh, as far as the income is concerned, the pay scale is similar for all these specialties in the government as well as the private hospitals. The only thing that makes a difference for a surgeon is you get paid for the cut work that you do. See, all right, and all the interventional procedures that we do, obviously, they have a, they are they have more cost compared to the ones who are in who are in medicine, who are physicians, because you know they don't have um, they have less. Uh, interventional procedures although there is a lot of uh, minimally invasive and interventional procedures in gastroenterology and cardiology as well but uh, for surgeons as as much as you cut you get the pay you get the money for it a lot of people just place surgery at the top now and in the terms of money as well you all surgeon very classic martin so is that a myth <laughs> i think money comes with fate because there are a lot of surgeons um uh, who you know who have who do not have accomplished private practices those who have very good private running private practices they are earning a lot of money they are making a lot of money jaise maine pehle kaha ki as much as you cut you get the money for that i think uh, i think that is uh, something that he decides as you said ki surgery is a very hectic lifestyle and of course you have such huge responsibility of someone's life in your hands Does that affect your mental health? Like, how do you take care of your mental health during the surgery, residency, and all? मुश्किल होती है, you know, when the whole of the responsibility and the onus lies on you. Um, I still remember the a BP at times. I recall those times when I have you know done a certain procedure which I had not done before, and uh, I used to you know keep. dreaming about that patient even in my sleep and until he is safe and i'm sure that he is safe and like you know if you have made an astomosis you are worried that ye mera chalna chahiye an astomosis how about it leaks you know things like that but you know you get the confidence the required confidence as as many procedures you do you get the confidence so it's just a matter of time i think for example if there's someone who's going through this surgery life so and long working hours they experience a burnout so what are any tips that you might give them hmm uh i think uh, the best thing is to, to enjoy the residency period because you know if you have good friends if you have a comfortable working environment uh, this burnout and everything you know it gets balanced but if your working environment is not really friendly and there is a lot of like pulling which actually happens thank god i did not have to suffer from that i was uh, lucky that my department was good and very supportive despite i being uh, the only female for a certain amount of time i think if you are if you are going through some sort of a phase like this you should always always seek help from help from a mental health professional there is no no harm in that and there isn't any stigma attached to it either So my next question is ke how did you survive because a lot of people see surgery as a very male dominated specialty so how is it to survive in a male dominated specialty and what kind of personality do you have to be and what kind of personality were you before surgery and how did that change you into now I would say ke before surgery I was a little civilized and after surgery thodi si badtameez ho gayi hu you know but because um i think as um, as far as you know your stuff you're good anyway so you know because the knowledge that you have it gives you confidence and that is what that is required you know to fight the male dominance and everything if you know your stuff koi aapke aage bol nahi sakta and if you know it and like and uh, uh, you have the right references then you know it you get the right confidence so um knowing your stuff is what that matters about the personality you cannot be the you cannot be the khamosh type in surgery you know at times you have to fight for your right plus the the work environment matters a lot it has a lot to play in the building of a surgeon try exploring the place before joining residency um although we don't have choice these days about where to go for residency but still if you have a ch- chance to choose 
always explore the workplace environment before joining a certain place. First year, May, when I was a junior, res- junior most resident, and we had to, uh, for like three, four months, we used to have ward weeks where we have to stay in the ward for six long days. During those times, I once I even cried too. <laughs> and I even, and I, I was like, Acha, main bhi ro sakti hu. seriously. But, you know, because I had three, four patients on that ward call who were sick and who had to be explored in the emergency. And uh, one of my seniors was constantly telling me to send them to the emergency. But, you know, I had some logistic issues and I was, uh, you know, there was a slight delay to shift all those four patients to the emergency to run them. And then I just got a burnout at that time. That's it. Uh, otherwise, uh, my wo- the working environment was actually very friendly. And all of the, our senior registrars and assistant professor and associate professors, they were very supportive. Um, but I think it's may uh, it's certain jo per- the person matters. The substance of the person matters a lot too. Because um, if you are easy to work with and uh, plus you are a knowledgeable person, they will value you. There is no reason that you know, someone will not value you. So once you're a surgeon, once, uh, because I have, I have yet to practice as a surgeon, so I think I can't really relate to that. Um, but everyone tells me that there is a lot of space compared to what is the thought process that is prevalent amongst the, um, amongst the medical professionals in Pakistan is that it is a profession that is discouraged for females. You know, they are actually discouraged to opt for this profession. Um, but I think there is a lot of room. There is a lot of room for women in surgery because um, there are a lot of a lot of female patients who do not want themselves to be exposed to males. And I think that's right too. They have the right to decide. So when I used to do OPTs, when I was the only female resident at a certain time in my ward, a lot of female patients used to, you know, follow me and tag along with me. So... So I think there is, I think there, it should be rewarding. Baki, you know, the reward lies with Allah. So for surgery, what is your daily motivation for the field of your choice? That surgery. What's one thing that you think? Wow, about? That's a very, very good question. I can't really think of one single motivation, daily motivation. I just love cut work. That's it. Just like it becomes just a job for you. Ha, that is again a good question. At times it becomes a job for you, actually, you know. That you are, you know, you so you're so you are so drilled into the routine and you are so much into the routine that it becomes just a cut work for you and it just become a tissue for you and it just becomes an organ for you rather than a, a whole human being at times yeah when you're too overworked but I think you know we have to um, I think we have to just keep we have, we have to keep a check on ourselves for that so if you have uh, people around you who keep a check on you then you are lucky so what was the biggest challenge in your life so far what was the biggest challenge getting into a med school that's it really that that holds so much truth like abhi tak jitne bhi accomplished doctors wagaira se baat ki unko mcat wala phase bahut zyada traumatizing aur challenging lagta hai na so it is true and what has been the biggest achievement i think it's yet to come i i would say being first certified female general surgeon from chisa yeah that is yeah alhamdulillah throughout this journey do you think that is something that you might have done differently yeah i think i should have um, i could have taken step to ck way earlier than now and throughout your skz life skz ha enjoy zyada karna chahiye tha padhna kam chahiye tha Just imagine that you find yourself in your first year, like you were meeting first year Anafisa. What is the advice that you would give to her? Hmm. That's a very different question. <laughs> um, 
something that I would like to do differently would be, as I said, that, you know, there is a life out of books too. And what about your future plans? What do you plan on doing next? I plan on doing second fellowship, inshallah, um, in oncology, probably either in breast surgery or in surgical oncology. My mother is constantly telling me to go for breast surgery because, um, and a lot of my female uh, doctor colleagues are telling me to go for uh, breast surgery because there is a lot of space. There is a lot, you know, there is a big lacuny in there. So, um, I, but I always wanted to be a surgical oncologist. So I am somehow being coerced by them, but I have yet to make a decision. But a second fellowship is a must for me. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Nafisa. And best of luck for all the future plans, inshallah. Uh, you will keep on making Shazad proud and keep on being the source of inspiration for so many female doctors to be, inshallah. So thank you so much for joining inshallah, us. Inshallah. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah.